good morning dear students in this session we are talking about irony in the french lieutenant woman irony is a story telling tool or device used to create a contrast between how things seem and how they really are beneath the surface the term comes from the latin word ironia which means feigned ignorance there are three types of irony used in a drama or a novel or a film so those three types of irony are verbal irony situational irony and dramatic irony verbal irony occurs when the speaker's intention is the exact opposite of what he or she is saying in romeo and juliet juliet says i will not marry yet and when i do i swear it shall be romeo whom you know i hate rather than paris juliet actually uh, doesn't like her father's decision of choosing paris for her she dislikes paris and uh, adores romeo and tells her mother ironically that whenever she would marry it wouldn't be paris but romeo whom she dislikes rather than paris through this expression juliet is actually confusing her mother next irony is situational irony it occurs when the actual result of a situation is totally different from what you would expect the result to be uh, we can have an example from history edg wells he called the first world war the war that will end war means the first world war is the war that will end all wars however it was actually the war that started all the wars and created many of the modern problems that we have today plus it was a prelude to the deadlier world war second now dramatic irony dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows a key piece of information that a character in a play movie or novel does not know shakespeare's tragedies are rich in dramatic irony we can have an example from uh, macbeth itself where king duncan he makes a remark like this that he was a gentleman on whom i built an absolute trust actually duncan is not aware of the prophecy of the witches while making this remark but the audience does they know what the witches did say to macbeth and what is going to happen next and later in the play uh, macbeth he kills duncan so what irony does in literature irony inverts our expectations it can create the unexpected twist at the end of a joke or a story that gets us laughing or crying verbal irony tends to be funny situational irony can be funny or tragic and dramatic irony is often tragic fowls employs two types of irony in the french lieutenant woman situational irony and dramatic irony so let's first discuss the situational irony there are lots of events but we are not going to talk about all those events so we are discussing only a few events so charles as uh, the study of uh, and a victim of evolution charles is actually a paleontologist that is uh, he studies fossils and tries to determine information about the flora and fauna of previous eras of our planet's history 
evolution is a key part of paleontology because it is by examining fossils that we develop ideas about how species have changed over time charles views himself as a man of progress a forward thinking intellectual in contrast to for example anasna's father who does not believe in darwin's theories anasna's father doesn't believe in darwin's theories the irony is that charles himself is a victim of a type of social evolution his social class is on the brink of being overtaken by the lower classes who are more fit to survive and uh, his wealthy aristocratic london gadabouts will soon become relics of the past when anasna's father offers to make him a partner in the family business charles cannot accept because he doesn't think that it is fitting for a gentleman to go into commerce he is unable to adapt to a changing environment and so he is a victim of evolution now the dramatic irony in the french left hand woman so i am mentioning three instances of dramatic irony in french left hand woman here first one sarah's reputation for sexual immorality this is a clear example of irony sarah is seen as sexually immoral by the whole of lime regis and her reputation is ruined because of what everyone believes to be true about her illicit affair with the french lieutenant people refer to her as a whore and she inspires scorn in many and pity in some premarital sex is viewed as unacceptable in a society in which she lives this is painfully ironic of course because sarah is not sexually immoral and is actually a virgin for the majority of the novel normally most people try to cover up nasty secrets about themselves in order to avoid a bad reputation but here sarah deliberately caught scandal by contributing to the creation of a false story about herself the second instance of dramatic irony the view of the upper class about their immoral servants in chapter 14 mrs paltney and anastina discuss the behavior of mary uh, the maid of mrs trantor and sam charles's ma- man servant the old woman and the young lady agree that the domestic servants need to be spoken to about their unacceptable flirtatious interactions which are not proper in the context of lime regis they focus in particular on an incident earlier that morning when mary was seen talking with a person that was uh, sam Uh, she was talking to that uh, young person the implication is that this encounter was improper in some way probably because it had uh, sexual undertones we learn at the end of the scene that the encounter in mrs trantor's kitchen between mary and sam was surprisingly serious and that they barely made an eye contact and when they did it was shyly it is ironic that the upper classes are condemning their servants for imagined misdemeanors uh, when the interactions between them are actually very innocent and uh, as restrained as would be deemed acceptable for young ladies meeting their aristocratic suitors in high society charles's desire for inheritance when charles's uncle wanted Charles to settle down in his country mansion inherit his uncle's wealth and run his estate Charles prefers to travel rather than inheriting his uncle's estate his uncle actually needed Charles to stay but Charles preferred 
traveling. In chapter 23, Charles finally leaves Rhyme Regis and goes back to where he grew up. We see a shift in his attitude here. He feels a call to the throne and is ready to take on the duty of inheriting and managing the household and land of his uncle. The irony here is that now when Charles finally sees the strong urge to take up his position as lord of the estate, his uncle is going to deny the fulfillment of his wish. Charles was certain that Uncle Robert would offer him the great house to move into with Ernestina, but Uncle Robert has other plans. He is going to remarry and keep the house for himself. So this is another example for dramatic irony in the French left and so on. So that's the end of this session. In the coming sessions, we can discuss more about the novel. Thank you.